Welcome everyone to our final A to J Author New User Webinar of 2023. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Authors Project Manager. Today we're going to talk about creating templates using the A to J Author Document Assembly Tool or the A to J DAT as we call it. Before we jump into it, a quick refresher. A complete document assembly package has two parts. There's the front end interview that the user sees and interacts with and a back end template that takes those user answers and combines them with the template to create the final filled in document. The user only sees this front end interface when they are asked a series of questions. Each blank is a field and each field has a variable behind it. Those variables are stored in an answer file. When the user enters data into the blanks in the interview, they are stored with their associated variables in that answer file. Our answer file format is .anx, which is a hotdocs answer file format, but it's just an XML file. When the user is done with the interview, that answer file, again, that's the variables plus the user's data, is passed to the server, which then compiles the final document. It's basically find and replace that on the server. The template is the form that you're automating that's been marked up in the A to J dat with variables to co correspond to the blank spaces on the form. When the server is passed a user's answer file, then it finds all the spots on the form that match the user's filled in variables and replaces them with the data. This webinar today is all about that back end piece, the template. The user is never going to see it, but it's a crucial part of the completed document assembly package because it's what actually becomes the user's filled in form. So today we're going to talk about turning the blank form on the left into the automated template on the right. You'll see these again, but all of those blue boxes on the template are fields that contain a variable. They are the spaces my user's data is going to go into. So they correspond to the blank lines on the original form. The A to J authoring, authoring interface has a tab based structure. There's tabs for where you put the metadata, the about, there's variable steps, pages, maps, all of that. There's also a special tab for the templates themselves. So you can see that the templates tab is highlighted in the screenshot in the bottom left hand corner. And there are two ways to create templates within the A to J DAT, text template and PDF template. Both have the same output, a PDF for the end user. The difference is all in how you start building out that template. Let's talk first about text templates with starting from scratch. Text templates start as blank documents and you add elements to them to build the automated form. Think a blank Google Doc that you're building out with text, logic, variables, and other elements. There are template options that control the entire document like font, headers, footers, and conditional logic which is the conditional logic section is whether or not the entire template is inserted into the final package based on some condition. With A to J DAT, you can have multiple templates that make up the final completed package, but not every template, just like not every form, is appropriate for every person who may be coming to your interview. So for example, if an end user says that they have children and it's a divorce proceeding that you're helping them complete the forms for, you're gonna to need to insert specific stuff related to custody in the user's final package. But if someone doesn't have children, the conditional logic would then trigger, would not assemble this template um, if it was related to custody, if have children TF was false. Um, and so it creates a custom experience for each end user, just like an interview does. Uh, and each end user can have the specific forms that they need, but is one overall interview that has to be managed um, and, and handled on the authoring side of it. Now let's talk through just a couple of these layout elements just a little bit. The one I want to point out specifically is the ability to add custom headers and custom footers to your template. These headers and footers all have the same editing features that you have with other text elements, which in the dat I'll talk about in a second more. But for example, what, like why would you need a custom header or a custom footer? The custom footer I've seen used as a way to tag this assembled document as one that was created in the self-help center or by the legal aid website. So you have the form look that's generated, but then there's also a little footer at the bottom that says this was assembled, or this was created with the help of the, you know, whatever county self-help center. 
so that the clerk or the judge knows that the self-represented litigant had some additional assistance. Depends on whether your jurisdiction requires that. When you are ready to build out the meat of your template, you're gonna to toggle then over from those template options to the add elements section of the toolbar slash toolbox that's available in the, in the DAP text template. The what options that are available to you, the elements that are available are section and page break, uh, rich text element, if else logic, and repeat loop. Page breaks and section breaks are pretty self-explanatory. They insert breaks into your text. So let's dive into the rich text element. It's the one you're gonna probably spend the most amount of time in if you are creating templates with the text template editor. The rich text element is where you're going to type out your content and add variables to your, uh, your template. You can insert variables right into the text body that you're drafting in a rich text element. You click the variable icon at the point at which you want to insert the variable and the variable picker will open up. From there, you can search for existing variables and add them. Just like in other sections of the A to J interview drafting process, when you start typing characters, A to J is gonna sort for known variables based on those characters. This is where that idea originated and, and has been implemented into other sections of A to J. But this picker sorts the variables based on the characters and then you can just select the variable that you want. Not super helpful if you don't have a ton of variables, but it is if you have a very extensive variable list that you're gonna try to sort through. The rich text element also has a lot of formatting options that you can take advantage of to create your document and make it look the way that you want it to look. You can do more here in a rich text element than you can in our standard interview text box. So when you're drafting interview components, you have limited editing options. You just have embolden, italicize, and underline along with some list options. Here, you can also do strike through, do superscript, subscript. You can change the font for a specific section of the text. There are a lot more editing capabilities that are built in to rich text elements in the DAT. Moving on then to the logic elements, if else conditionals let you conditionally insert elements. So based on some condition being true or false or some value of a variable being met by the end user's answer file, some of those answers that we talked about, a chunk of text or a repeat loop can be inserted into the final document. You can also insert page breaks or section breaks based on some condition as well. So this if else element has many elements that you add into it based on some condition being true or false. You can have it just insert if true or false or some value met, or you can have an if and an else if it's most appropriate for your situation. This is what it looks like when there are there is an if and an else. So if have notified is true, then you're going to have a chunk of text that says I notified you of the previous uh, previously of the necessary repairs, blah, blah, blah. This is like a letter to a landlord. Otherwise, if they didn't notify the landlord previously, it's going to say instead, this is my first notice to you and blah, blah, blah. You have 14 days, whatever chunk of text you want inserted there. So again, same interview different uh, unique experiences for different end users that are coming to the template to complete it. Repeat loops are the final major element in a text template that can be inserted. Repeat loops are used when you need to gather the same information from an end user multiple times. So for example, how many children the user has and those children's information or um, number of assets or debts the user has and information about those assets or debts. That's gathered in a repeat loop as many times as the end user needs it. In the interview itself, it's set up specifically with a, a way to, to just ask those set of questions. You only have to draft them one time and then ask them as many times as the user needs them. In the template itself, same idea. You only have to create the element once and then tell A to J that this is part of a repeat loop. You're going to repeat it a set number of times or for a specific counting variable. And then it can be either shown to the end user with a, uh, a table, a list, or a chunk of text option available. And there are different formatting options for each one of those, the table, the list, or the chunk of text, based on how you want that, to be, that repeat information to be shown to the end user. With this, part of the text template then is always, and, and in any uh, instance of authoring, part of good authoring, is to test your interview many times at several different points. 
One of those is when you're creating the interview to make sure that the question flows as expected and you haven't run anything, left anything out. Another of those is when you've finished automating a section of the template and you want to ensure that it completes the underlying form and looks as you expect it. So you can test assemble as many times as you want within the template itself by clicking the test assemble button that's highlighted with the arrows. Up will pop the ability to load an answer file. That local answer file is generated in the preview tab when you are within uh, preview. And then you can toggle to your saved answers. You can select it and then uh, test assemble, generating the document to make sure that it looks as you expect it. You also want to make sure that you have answer files that test the boundaries of your interview and your template. So if you're doing repeat loops, test for um, you know, one and also test for seven children, if that's sort of an expected user behavior. With the if else statements, test for an if it's true, test if it's false. See if it pops up and assembles all the things that you would expect it to assemble based on conditionals that you've set in the interview. Whatever you test the boundaries of your interview, test the boundaries in your template. So it's helpful to have multiple different answer files sitting there waiting uh, for testing. That is text templates. And we're going to now move on to PDF templates. So same idea. The output is going to be a PDF for your end user. The difference is just in what you're starting with. With PDF templates, you're starting with an existing PDF. This lets you start with that PDF you already have in hand and automate on top of it. So this is mostly used when there may be complicated or strict formatting that the resulting form must stick to, like a specific way the caption has to look or the court already has a form available on their website or in paper. And you want to you don't want to mess around with building out all the elements that already exist. You have the form in front of you, either digitally or in paper copy and you want to just automate layer on top of that. This tool is also easier than the text template tool because all of the text-based work is already in that underlying PDF. You're just layering fields and variables on top of the text that already exists. So you upload the existing document and you add variable fields on top of it. It looks blank like this. You click upload PDF and your local search um, will pop up, you, you go to the PDF that you want, and it uploads that PDF into A to J. And this is an example then of an uploaded form that is ready to be, be automated. So it is a template, you've turned a PDF into a template, now you're going to add fields and variables on top of it. All you have to do to add fields and variables to your template is to click on the blank line, the A to J dat, is going to do its best to guess the size of the line and add an appropriately sized field box to it. You can always change the size. If you don't like the auto selected size or it's just not right, you can adjust it. And I will talk about a couple of keyboard shortcuts that let you, you uh, cheat that process a little bit. But the field boxes, as you can see here in the GIF, are yellow when they do not contain a variable, when they have unassigned variable to this field box. It's just a blank field on the screen. And when they contain variables, they turn blue. So once you have your field, you're going to need to add a variable to that field. What is A to J supposed to put here when it assembles that document? You can create a new variable on the fly, or you can use one that already exists in your variables tab. My preferred authoring style is to create all of the fields. So I go through and create all of those yellow blanks, and then I go through and make and add all of my variables within the template. This saves you the step of having to create the variables in the variables tab first, like you used to have to do with A to J author. And I like this create the variable on the fly functionality that we added with the A to J dat PDF template um, that in later versions of A to J author, we added this to the interview creation section of at, um, as well. So that's a relatively new feature that you may not know of or be aware of yet, but the ability to create variables on the fly is available anywhere within A to J that you are going to add a variable. So if there's a spot to add a variable, there's the ability to create a variable on the fly. The same sort of variable design window is available in the templates, in the PDF templates, and also in interview drafting as well. With the PDF templates, 
you can handle different variable re related scenarios as well. Like, for example, check boxes that need to be check marks or check box fields that need to be circles or filled in boxes, whatever. There's different check mark styles that you as the author can select. You can handle if A to J is supposed to pass a word for a multiple choice variable instead of a checkbox. The A to J can also handle too much text to fit into an assigned field space with an addendum. So you have that, that yellow box that becomes a blue box, and maybe all of the things that your user is going to type in aren't going to fit into the space of that box. You as the author then choose what happens when there is too much text. Should A to J append only the overflow to an addendum? Should it append everything? So you want the blank on the field to stay blank and you want everything to go over to an addendum so that it, uh, that, that chunk of text stays together? Or do you want it to just cut off any text that overflows? So maybe there is a field for a name and it only has space for eight characters and eight characters are all that's allowed, but the user's name is Christopher, which has 10 characters. To that, you're cutting off that E and R at the end. Depends on the form, depends on how you want to pass this data, how your court requires it or your form requires it, but there are different text overflow options. The final thing there is the um, addendum label. This lets you have a label so that it makes sense. If there is overflow text and it is sent to an addendum, there can be a label that goes with that overflow text so that that chunk of text makes sense if someone just has a piece of paper that prints out at the end of their package um, with some words or characters that have gotten sent over uh, what that is referring back to. True-false checkboxes are a little bit different than the multiple choice ones that we just talked about because A to J can pass a check if the variable is false or if the variable is true. True-false variables within A to J author have three states to them. Uh, it is unanswered, unchecked, and uh, that means that it has not been seen by the end user. If a variable is presented to the user in a page and left unchecked, that variable is then set to false. If it is seen and checked, that variable then is true. So there is true, false, and unanswered as a state in which a true, false variable can live in. If it is, like, why would you need the, it to be checked if the variable is false? Um, let's say we have a scenario in which you have a form that asks if the user has children and there are two options or two little check boxes that, that are next to that question. One says yes and one says no. You can have one variable called Mary TF in the interview and present it to the end user in a question like, are you married? It has two button options. The yes button sets the variable to true. The no button sets the variable to false. In the template then, you want the checkbox field next to the no option on the form to set the check, check mark, the check the box when the variable is false. So there's that little toggle option at the bottom. If the variable is false, draw the check mark. This saves you as the author from having to create a separate variable for the no or the false option because the form requires that it be checked if false or if true. Um, it just depends on the complexity of your form and whether or not um, a yes or no, no, they need to be answered or if it's just the true that needs to be answered. On the right hand side are the template options that govern the entire template like font and sizing and conditional logic that we talked about with the uh, text template. The feature that the top arrow is pointing to, the base PDF, either view or replace, is a handy, author-friendly, long-term looking feature that allows you to replace the base PDF option. This option is thinking about all the work that you're gonna put into creating this template and this beautiful interview. Then you're gonna make it live and people are loving it and your analytics are great, people are using it. And then all of a sudden your court changes the spacing on the caption or adds a field and your template no longer matches the form that it is intended to automate. But fear not, future you, you don't have to redo all the work that you have put into this template. All you have to do is replace the base PDF, which is really just a picture of the form anyway, and you just have to adjust the placement of or add additional fields as needed to meet the layout of the new form. So we're helping to future-proof your interview and template and ensure that the time investment that you are putting into automation stays viable as long as possible. The PDF DAT supports multiple page documents as well. It's not a one and done show pony or it's not just for simple forms. 
I want you to hit it with your longest PDF. I would love to see examples of 50 page documents automated with the DAT PDF tool. Really put the DAT through its paces, use those complicated forms, use those few errors and a check boxes and, and tons of variables in it and really put A to J, max out its limitations. Just don't tell my tech team, I told y'all to, to try to break A to J, but um, it can handle it. It's not just for simple forms. Finally, the DAT PDF template tool has a couple keyboard shortcuts to make your life easier. The keyboard shortcuts all work, but if you're like me, you never remember what they actually are. So you can open the keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet, which is what I'm showing you here, by hitting the control plus the forward slash or the command plus the forward slash on a Mac. Then all of those minor editing changes you need to do by moving the fields to line up exactly like you want them to, or they're too big or too small, or you need to nudge them left, right, up, down, whatever, duplicate. You made your box perfect for the checkbox, but now you have 60 checkboxes to make, you can just duplicate the ones you've already done. All that's available to you if you remember what the shortcuts are, or you can just open up this cheat sheet and it will toggle the shortcut menu uh, for you to see as you're editing. Now, I know I said finally on that last screen, but there's one more part of the A to J DAT template building process that I need to cover. The screen that I'm showing you is the special destination, the special branching destination options or buttons within an interview page. Buttons within an interview are how you control and set the navigation for the end user within the interview, it's how you move them around. On certain buttons, when you mean to move an end user out of an interview, you need to use special branching options. The ones specifically for A to J DAT templates, both text and PDF, are assemble, generate PDF document, and assemble, generate PDF and process form. You are just using an A to J as a front end interface for Hot Docs or another back end tool. You just use success process form. So like if you are using this with Hot Docs and you're intending to post the answer files to somewhere like LHI, you use success process form. If you are using the A to J DAT, whether hosted on A to J.org, self-hosted or on LHI, you use the assemble commands at the bottom. So assemble generate PDF, is going to generate the document, but not close the browser window. The user is going to have to manually close their, their browser window. The assemble generate PDF and process form is going to generate the document locally, download it to the, the user's browser. It'll save then however the user has their browser configured to handle uh, documents that get shared with them. And it will also post the user's file, answer file to the server to be saved. So this is the same sort of process that happens when you hand off an answer file, for example, on LHI to Hot Docs, you post the answer file and then Hot Docs assembles it and generates the document. Here, you're getting the document and then handing off the answer file to LHI or A to J.org to be saved in the user's account. Okay, so that was a lot in a very short amount of time, but how can you use what you've learned? I often find that it reinforces what I've learned if I can practice it, so I created sample exercise as a training tool for new authors, and you can use them as well uh, if you're even experienced authors. So these uh, sample exercises, if you have a project in mind, by all means, start with the project you have, like go with it. But if you don't have an immediate project or you want to try out some easy practice examples, we have these for you to get started. There are over a dozen sample exercises that range in complexity and time commitment from the quick and easy 30 minute automation exercise to a comprehensive one um, that's likely going to take you a couple of hours. You can find all of them by hovering over the learn tab on a to j author.org and selecting the sample exercises or using the search bar on our website to search for sample exercises. Several of them, like the one showing on the screen, contain um, templates that you can then add to your interviews to practice your template building within the A to J DAT. The descriptions of the sample exercises explain if they are meant to be used with text templates, PDF templates, hot docs templates, or just to practice interview drafting skills like adding macros and functions. All of that's in the descriptions in the sample exercise page on our website. Another thing to point out on our website is chapter 15 of our authoring guide. You click on the learn tab, it will take you automatically to the authoring guide or you can follow on the path here, content slash A to J dash authoring dash guide, and that's our software manual. 
it has more than 15 <laughs> chapters of content in it, about 300-ish pages if you printed it out. Everything you need to know about A to J. Specifically, chapter 15 is focused on the deck and how to do what I just talked about in this training. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great year. Thank you, and we'll see you all in December 4th. Have a good day.